Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today we're talking about the alleged sale of all of Pink Floyd's master rights, their catalog, their images, everything but the publishing rights, interestingly, to Sony for 400 million. Now, there were rumors that this would have happened before with um, an entity controlled by Blackstone, ooh, creepy, literally, um, that the, that uh, Pink Floyd would sell to them, the Roger and David couldn't agree. Not a big deal. They can't agree on anything and haven't for decades. But apparently all sides agreed on this, even though no one's talking. Uh, Pink Floyd's representatives aren't talking and Sony's aren't. But David Gilmore did recently give people an idea about why he wanted to do this. He said that he's just sick of the fighting because whenever a Pink Floyd reissue or some sort of remix or anything to do with Pink Floyd comes up, um, when it's the stuff from before 1987, he and um, Nick Mason and Roger Waters and ostensibly the estate of Rick Wright have to agree on things. And again, David and Roger hate each other. They've made that very clear. They will always probably hate each other. They don't agree on anything. Um, for instance, the uh, reissue of Animals, which came out, I think, a year or so ago, that was delayed by about five years because they couldn't agree on the liner notes. Yeah. So um, David's theory about why he wanted to get rid of this wasn't about the money, although I'm sure that always helps, but because he's just sick of the back and forth. And as for Roger, he hasn't talked about this at all. Roger is the one who's very anti-corporation. He's very radical in his politics. Uh, he wrote the song Money about uh, corporate exploitation and about greed. And, he, and those sort of radical principles have frankly strengthened in Roger over the years in terms of what he talks about in interviews and even in terms of his lyrical content. So it would be interesting to hear from him at some point, assuming this alleged story is true, what his view on all of this is. But I want to just look at why would major corporations like Sony, like BlackRock, Blackstone, Warner, why would all of these companies want to buy a musician's catalog? Because a lot of musicians have sold this. Um, Stevie Nicks, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, Neil Young, so many. Uh, and those are just a few that I can recall. Why? What, what would these corporations want to do that for? Now, it's easy to see why a musician would want it. When a musician feels that, they're, that they've got more of their life behind them than in front of them, they'll say, look, it will be easier for me just to cash out in my lifetime than to worry about a complex situation with trust in estates, to worry about who's going to manage it, to put, and all of this other, all of this other stuff. So that's probably their thinking. Better to pass on to my kids a couple hundred million than all of the burdens and responsibilities of managing a catalog that's worth a lot of money. And because it would take active management because of the very small revenue stream from streaming, um, it does take more of a hands-on approach from the inheritors of a musical catalog than it used to, because let's say you're a musical artist who dies at the peak of your popularity in 1975. Well, what's going to happen in 1976? You're going to sell a lot of your old records. The record labels will come out with compilations that your heirs, let's say, just rubber stamp and agree to. Those are going to sell. The heirs are going to get money from from it. Uh, look at the Marvin Gaye estate. They've um, retained the rights, and not only do they micromanage the catalog, but they sue everyone and everything that they suspect of uh, plagiarizing Marvin Gaye's music. Uh, so it is a, it, it can be a full time job. So it it could be that just give the uh, and just give those who stand to inherit the stuff some money rather than the responsibility. But the more interesting question that I alluded to earlier is why do these corporations want it? Well, we've confirmed that streaming has um, very little revenue can, when you compare it to the physical sales of years past, whether it's the LP, the cassette tape or the CD, physical sales generally made more money. 
And it's the tech companies that are doing really well with the streaming platforms, not the record companies and certainly not the artists. So what else is there? There's the merchandising, because under this deal, the Pink Floyd merchandising rights will apparently go to Sony. And that is something, because Pink Floyd is still a very merchandisable band, maybe not as much as Taylor Swift. Uh, but things like um, the prism from Dark Side of the Moon, the iconic Wish You Were Here cover, all of that stuff, it, it's, it's still iconic enough where there's merchandising value. Uh, what else? Well, um, there's some of the promo around live shows where um, the merchandise is sold, even though the publishing rights remain with the band. So Sony won't really benefit too much from the live stuff. Where it really gets interesting is licensing the music, because one of the ways that people who own the rights to recorded music still make money is through licensing. If Netflix wants to play a Pink Floyd song in a show that they produce, if a major Hollywood production wants to use it, a, a, any sort of television series, if an ad wants to use it, <clears throat> huge business i could just see um you know black black rock the asset management company for you with money playing in the background yeah all right um but yeah strange stranger things have happened and there's even the small things bumper music when a television stations will play a well-known song uh let's say at a football or baseball game you you know it's the thing you hear you hear da 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 at the beginning but every now and then sort of when fox sports goes to a break you'll hear a a song that's a, a pop song a rock song a hip-hop song whatever that's licensing and that is very lucrative so um this is something that you might see a lot more for instance when michael jackson owned his own material uh he was very you know very on top of where it was licensed when that went to sony you know the highest bidder can put beat it in your ad i mean you could have something for i don't know i don't know be what do you beat eggs or something i don't know there's some sort of food that they say you beat and you could just hear beat it on that you can tell me in the comments what kind of food uh you beat uh ostensibly after it's been slaughtered um uh, anyway so so that's the the utility that's the economic utility of a company like whether sony or blackstone or whatever buying this music and what it does show you is that yeah in a, in a perfect world you would keep your stuff but uh, because these are older artists, I do think it's a matter of um, do you want to, one, burden your heirs, which is usually your kids, um, with all, with managing this catalog, or maybe you just downright don't trust your kids, and you'd rather just say to hell with it, let it go to the corporate system where it will be licensed to the highest bidder without any artistic qualifications, because that's generally what the labels do. Um, for instance, there's a famous instance in the 60s where Buick wanted to use Light My Fire. Uh, Jim Morrison said, only if I can smash the car with a sledgehammer in the commercial. GM said, thanks, but no thanks. Where now, uh, with if I don't know if the what the status of the Doors music is. I think that they still own it because John Densmore is, again, very politically uh, right on and radical. And I don't think he wanted to sell it. But let's say... Um, uh, Stevie Nicks, a Stevie Nicks song, or uh, or maybe a Bruce Springsteen. You could so buy the rights to "Born in the USA," use AI to change it to "Made in the USA," and sell you know shoes that are made in Texas. I don't know, but that's the world we live in. So that's what's going to happen. So be prepared um, for um, such hits as "The Gunner's Dream" and other songs about the horrors of war to appear in commercials for life insurance if this sale is true as it's being reported. Like, subscribe, we'll see you next time. Take care.